Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll start with a couple of announcements. Tomorrow on the members site we are posting a video uh, called Safe Exercises for Painful Knees and since knee issues are so common, um, those of you who want to exercise, you can do it even if you have knees that are a little bit messed up or have been injured, etc. So make sure you get on the website and watch that. Fall semester starts in a month, time to get enrolled. Um, advanced study on August 18th, I'm going to do the part two of the mammography, Truth, Truth, Lies, and Controversy. The, this is based on the book by Peter Gacci, and really a magnificent book, just kind of complicated to read. So you get slides, and I walk you through all the material. You'll have a nice piece to use for reference to help you and others that you interact with make decisions. And then uh, last but not least, the next Food Over Medicine certification course starts in September. I limit these classes to 20 people per class, so get yourself enrolled if you think you want to do this. All righty. Picked a couple of topics to talk about today. One that piggybacks on um, a, an article that I discussed a couple weeks ago, Dr. Esselstyn's new findings in one of the articles that he wrote that discussed some issues relating, relating to cardiovascular disease, one of which is this misunderstanding about HDL cholesterol. So I want to bring it up again because a new meta-analysis looked at the effects of various drugs and supplements on increasing HDL cholesterol levels. The good news is they all work. The bad news is that it doesn't make any difference. People who have higher HDL levels in response to taking these various things don't end up with better outcomes. And so the researchers advised against using any type of intervention, artificial intervention, to uh, increase HDL levels. Now this analysis was fairly significant and included 39 trials and 117,411 patients, so that's a bunch. Um, two of the trials concluded that niacin therapy was useless in patients who were taking statin drugs, and often niacin is combined with statin drugs to increase HDL cholesterol. That didn't turn out to be a very good idea. And then uh, studies were also included that had investigated the um, a couple of drugs that significantly raised HDL levels, but um, the other problem is they also increase the risk of death, so you don't want to die with high HDL levels. That's really counterproductive. The endpoints measured in, for the whole meta-analysis were all-cause or coronary artery disease mortality, and none of the studies showed that any of the stuff had a positive effect. Now the drug companies seem completely undeterred by this. They're um, testing new drugs. Merck and Lilly have a couple of drugs that are currently being tested. No data is available yet. The researchers who uh, did the meta-analysis told Heartwire that they were inspired to do this because they were going to cardiology conferences and they were amazed at how much enthusiasm uh, they heard from cardiologists and experts about increasing HDL levels, so they wanted to see if the excitement was warranted. It clearly was not, but they acknowledged when they were speaking with Heartwire, they said, research rarely changes things. Instead, they said, the proponents of the theory will defend it. They'll say that the trials were too small or too short, the dose wasn't right, the right endpoint wasn't measured, and of course more research is needed, feeding the conundrum, you know, nothing is ever settled, even though everybody criticizes it. Sometimes things really are settled, it just may not be settled the way you want it to be, and um, when that happens, I think people find other ways to promote their outdated ideas. We don't need more research. I mean, when, when cholesterol drops, HDL drops, I already had covered this in reference to um, Dr. Esselstyn's study. He had cited research in his article showing that it doesn't matter how much LDL you have, what matters is its efficacy in, um, uh, in activity. And oxidation to the main protein as a result of poor diet is, is very, very important. So you're much better off with total cholesterol low, LDL low, HDL low, and uh, HDL that's not damaged by oxidation than you are with high HDL levels that are artificially induced with substances like drugs and supplements while you're still eating a poor diet. So. Um, unfortunately, I wish I could tell you, well, this is the last you'll hear about this because we put the matter to rest. I have in my head, some of you have also, but um, your local physicians and cardiologists, are, many of them are probably still promoting the idea that HDL needs to go up. Now, this next situation I want to talk about is very disturbing. According to a recent survey, survey many kids, most kids who are overweight, don't think they are. This survey included 6,100 children and adolescents between the ages of 8 and 15. The majority of overweight kids thought that they were okay, 81% of boys and 71% of girls. 
48% of obese boys and 36% of obese girls think they are about the right weight. So this is obviously a problem. The answer to it is not to embarrass these children or make them feel self-conscious about their weight, but it is clear that there's no discussion going on at all with a lot of these kids. And uh, that comes up actually in medical articles and blogs. Everybody's afraid to talk to children. Um, they don't want to hurt their feelings. And, and I agree, this has to be done very carefully so as to not make children feel terrible about themselves. But avoiding the issue is not the answer. And think what would happen if we did that in other situations with children. So your kid's failing in math or can't read. So instead of bringing it up um, and arranging the right type of assistance, things like helping with homework or a tutor or conferences at school, you just avoid the issue and allow the child to fall further and further behind. Obviously, people don't do that. Most responsible parents, you know, guidance and, and help with parents is required all the time when you're raising children. Those of you who have kids know what I'm talking about. And this is how kids grow up safely and they turn into productive, well-adjusted human beings. Um, you know, I think part of the problem right now with kids and their weight is that from their perspective, they probably do feel like they're normal because unlike when I was a kid, when there were only maybe three or four overweight children in our class of 750, um, that's how many I graduated with. Uh, today, most of the children that they play with and, and are um, hanging out with are overweight or obese, so they probably do feel they're normal. They look just like all the other people around them. So what we have to do is, again, the answer isn't to feel self-conscious about it or make children feel self-conscious. In fact, I think parents are in a position to do something about it without even saying much to begin with. You get rid of the bad food, you start serving a healthy, healthy, healthy food, and you start engaging in physical activity with your kids. There doesn't have to be any big announcement about, hey, you're 50 pounds overweight, so now we have to do this. The whole family can just start to adopt a more health-promoting culture, and uh, eventually that will become, kids will pick up on it, it will become the norm for them. We really do have to pay attention to this because these kids don't outgrow uh, their weight problems. Research is real clear on that. And the other thing is, and this is just horrible, it pains me to say this, and I said it in last week's video clip, kids who are overweight and obese rate their quality of life as being worse than cancer patient children who are cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. So we just can't let this alone, all right? Well, that's all for now. Have a wonderful day and um, the rest of the week. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news. And as usual, please pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it.